Welcome back to the Gun Collective. I'm Joel. Let's get into today's video. Hey guys, I'm with Precision Rifle Network and today we're out here on the range to discuss what I think are the best calibers for long range shooting for each type of rifle platform. So today we've got a bolt action, an AR-10, and an AR-15 platform. Now before I tell you what calibers they are and why I chose them, I have to give you some context. Otherwise the comment section is going to blow up with all kinds of negativity. My smart money says it's still going to blow up with some negativity, so make sure you check that out before you go. So for the bolt action, I'm talking specifically about precision rifle series style of competitions. Understanding full well that there are different tools for different jobs, right? A PRS bolt action is not an F-class bolt action, is not a Magnum hunting bolt action. For the AR-10, the context I'm talking about is designated marksman roles, maybe hunting. And for the AR-15, I'm talking about gas gun, tactical competitions, and maybe hunting. Let's get started with the bolt action. So what you're seeing here is an MDT ACC chassis with a zero compromise optics 5x27 scope up top, an Atlas bipod, and a Terminus Zeus action chambered in 6mm GT. The vast majority of PRS competitors are using some kind of 6mm Wildcat cartridge. 6GT is common, but so are 6mm Dasher, 6BR, 6x47, and 6mm Creedmoor. These cartridges use less powder and a high BC bullet. BC stands for ballistic coefficient, of course, and it's basically a measurement of how efficiently a bullet flies through the air. Higher BC equals flatter shooting round that's better in the wind. This all comes down to ballistics, right? We want a soft shooting, flat trajectory bullet that's as good as possible at bucking the wind. So let's take a few shots out to distance here and see what it looks like. By now you guys have all seen our signature blend with blackout coffee called Tenacity. This is a low acidity, high flavor, high caffeine. <laughs> you guys are going to love this. It's got a little extra jolt of caffeine in there. This is a great, great roast for you guys that love good coffee without all that acid. Blackout now also has stuff from GOA and FPC. This is a great option if you want to support those two different groups. Any of those blends will do you good. Anything from Blackout is good. There's a link in the description to get you a discount. They're always running sales. Check the link. Go use our code. It's going to be awesome. Check out Tenacity or the Pro Gun Blends. That's what I'm calling them. That's not what they call them. We would really appreciate it if you guys supported them because they support us and that enables us to keep making videos for you guys. Alright, so let's move on to the AR-10 platform. So this is kind of a Franken gun, to be honest. I personally didn't own an AR-10, which I guess speaks to how useful I personally think they are, but I asked around to a lot of different friends and no one else seemed to have one either. Maybe they're not that popular. I eventually decided to buy this CMMG Endeavor Complete Upper in 308, and then just borrowed a friend's lower off his 6.5 Creedmoor Aero Precision build. It's a Trigger Tech Diamond Trigger in it, it's a 24 inch barrel, chambered in 308, as I said. Now I've got a Maven 5 to 30 scope up on top. So, 308. <laughs> in a world of 6.5s, why? Well, when we consider the faster, lighter, and flatter shooting calibers commonly used for precision long range, unfortunately, 308 kind of gets pushed back to the mid range category and is really well suited for hunting most of North American game animals and also for designated marksman roles for law enforcement or military. Now, if we take a quick look at the ballistics of a 308, we see that it falls into the subsonic range around 800 to 1000 yards depending on configuration. But if we want to keep the energy delivery up above 1000 foot pounds for hunting, 
then the useful range drops to around 600 yards or less. I think there's a big difference between sniping with a bolt action 308 and running a shorter barreled 308 gas gun in a designated marksman role. So for the designated marksman, they need something that can be easily maneuvered in and around barricades. It's semi-automatic, still able to engage man-sized targets at distances where they don't really have to worry about the wind very much. Let's get some rounds downrange with this bad boy off some barricades and unusual positions at the relative distances that this would be useful for, and we'll see what we get. Probably gonna shoot off a tripod and maybe some rocks over here and maybe some posts, because that mimics the type of designated marksman role. Now the context for the Precision AR-15 is pretty slim. Precision and long range are not usually the words you hear to describe in any AR-15 platform really, but it is possible. I think it could be useful for some tactical competitions as well as some types of hunting. Now this is an Alexander Arms 6.5 Grendel. It's a factory complete gun with a 20 inch barrel. I've added a dead air Sandman silencer out on front and I'm running a Vortex Viper PST 5 to 25 up on top. Now the obvious arguments against this caliber will come from people saying, why not just run a 77 grain or heavier 223 bullet? And you could, and still others will point out that the 6 arc destroys the Grendel. 6.5 Grendel over the heavy 223 in my opinion, because this is my context and my perfect world in my video. Don't be bringing your negativity around here and raining on my parade, but seriously, it's because of the ballistics and the energy at longer distances. Even heavy 223s just can't touch a 6.5 Grendel in the mid-range energy or the ability to buck the wind. The 6 Arc arguably has better ballistics than the 6.5 Grendel, but I simply haven't had any time or experience with that caliber yet. Therefore, the Grendel is still going to be a better choice in my opinion today. You would shoot this rifle on targets and animals from point blank range out to a thousand yards given certain scenarios. The 6.5 Grendel is still going supersonic at a thousand yards. So you could definitely make impacts at that distance on, on targets in competition if you want. Now, if we want to stay above a thousand foot pounds of energy for hunting animals, then we shouldn't be shooting the 6.5 Grendel over about 400 yards in my opinion. This makes it ideal for coyotes, hogs, and even deer. Let's get some shots through the 6.5 Grendel off the prone and off of some barricades to mimic some real world situations and see how it looks. Alright guys, as you can see, there's no issue getting impacts at these distances, but the real usefulness of any precision rifle caliber comes down to context. Make sure and comment below with your context. What different calibers would you choose, and in what context do you typically use them? We'd love to read those comments and hear your thoughts on that. Please make sure you're subscribed to TGC with all notifications turned on so that you don't miss any of the videos from the Gun Collective. Thanks for watching.